Today, we're speaking about the heart of a mother. The heart of a mother. Now, um, my, my mother always used to, well, she used to come and want to hear what I was going to say about Mother's Day because she, she wanted, I don't know if she just wanted me to, what I was going to say about her, I don't know, but uh, she always enjoyed Mother's Day. And, but she also enjoyed remembering her mother. And um, my grandma was a, uh, quite an individual. She was a, very much a church goer. Uh, she was a preacher and fill-in speaker. And uh, she was quite um, uh, anointed in her ministry. And my mom, of course, uh, was never a speaker, but she was a very dedicated person, very compassionate uh, individual. And uh, so we've, we've learned a lot from, hopefully we learn a lot from our mothers. And sometimes we were blessed with a very good mother, and sometimes it was not the best of situations. But most of the time, people give to us what they have. And you give of what you've got. And it isn't that it's perfect, it's that it's what, they, what we have. And my uncle always used to say of my grandmother that we got a beating every Saturday whether we needed it or not, you know. And, uh, but knowing my uncle, he needed it. Uh, <laughs> so he was always in trouble, even as an adult. So uh, he was just one of those people that uh, had a will of his own. But, t- pardon? He always pushed the boundaries, yes. So, uh, so anyhow, we'll talk about that. Today we're looking at First Timothy, Second Timothy chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. That precious memory triggers another. Your honest faith and, which a, a, and what a rich faith it is, handed down from your grandmother Lois to your mother Eunice and now to you. And the special gift of ministry you received when I laid hands on you and prayed. Keep that ablaze. God doesn't want us to be shy with his gifts, but bold and loving and sensible. (laughs) So as we think of Mother's Day, uh, how many had mothers? Oh, yeah, thank you. Yes, all right. I just wanted to make sure everyone here, you had a mother. Okay, yeah, and I didn't say you are a mother. I said you have one. So we, we all have a mother. And uh, we all have an impression that um, comes to us through our, our mothers. And uh, being a mother, uh, you are giving a lasting impression upon, uh, upon your children. And even if you don't have children, you're the neighborhood children or the aunts and uncles, you know, brothers and sisters, uh, children, and so on. So everyone, uh, think of one word that describes your mother. Now, some of us... Some of you are in trouble because your mother's sitting here, and you better make sure it's the right word that you say. Paul is back there punching the kids. Okay, here's what I want you to say. (laughs) Ruth on the other side, here's what you need to say. All right, so you have a word, okay? One word or a couple words, you know, it doesn't have to be one. That would describe your mother, okay, tell me. You have, to, you have to tell me what it is now. A what? Loving. Unconditional love. Caring. Yes. Is that for you to Ruth or is that for you to your kids to tell about you? Okay. Uh, oh, that was yours. Okay. <laughs> Girls, what do you have to say about your mom? <laughs> She's sitting right there. Oh, annoying. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Annoying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Musical. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is musicals. What, what word pops to your mind? Mine, uh, for my mother, I mean, she was loving, caring, you know, and compassionate, things like that. But hard worker. <laughs> My mom was, she could work two or three men under the, under the table. She was just constantly, you know, with the farm and up early in the morning and taking care of the little calves and the cows and helping out everybody else and getting things going for the barn. She was always up and going and working very hard. 
Even whenever she had her surgery, she went in the hospital and had surgery and th- uh, gallbladder surgery, and two days later she was in the barn. <laughs> you know, and in the old days, they used to have those big milk cans, and my mom could just grab hold of those things and pull them right out of the, the bin, you know. And, but it had its toll, because I always remember my mother being a little upset that when her, when my mom and my grandmother were together, they would think that my mother was the older one, <laughs> you know. So for many years it was that way because of I get her hard life of work that she, she put in. And, uh, and, you know, on the farm it was my dad worked a full, uh, full-time job in the coal mine, and we had a full-time farm, and my mom basically kept everything going. So she was, she was quite the individual. But as we think of working and compassionate, unconditional love, anyone else? Pardon? Giving. Giving. Dedicated. Cassie, you want to get in some brownie points? Irreplaceable. Very good. I'm waiting. (laughs) So we find that there are many words or a few words that come to mind about what a mother is. And we find that um, we all get a chance to make a difference. Every one of us gets an opportunity to make a difference in someone's life. And the the challenge for us is we're not perfect. And being able to take our imperfections and also recognize that we have strengths. And, And we focus on the strengths of who we are. The strength of our life, the strength of the, the things that are in, in us that are just seemingly commonplace. Uh, but they're not common because they're, we think of them as being common because they're ours. But there was this desire, my mother, her desire, <laughs> we'd bring her back and forth from her, you know, from Indiana over here. And we would travel on uh, 22 422, and we'd pass Belzano. Belzano. Anybody know where Belzano is? Okay, it's on 422. Belzano, there was a camp there, a uh, holiness camp. And my mother and her very good friend, Helen Swan, went to that camp as teenagers. And they are the, probably the two most godly women you would ever want to be associated with but my mom felt that she wanted to be a missionary. Uh, and she felt that she should be a missionary. And it, was, and it just never worked out for her to do this. And so, <laughs> oddly enough, her son is a, a minister and her grandson is a missionary. So what you desire in your life may not be for you. It may be that you are going to, that impression is going to be upon the hearts and the lives of your children. You see, a mother's prayer, being concerned enough about someone to pray for them. My mother always prayed for her boys. (laughs) And um, you think about it, my mom, we had maybe 14, 16 uh, foster boys through our home. No girls, (laughs) no girls, only boys. (laughs) My mother said, can't raise a girl. <laughs> Just can't do it. You know, boys are better, yes, you know, all that kind of stuff. But anyhow, she, but she always had foster. We always had foster kids in the house. And um, there was two that stayed with us probably 10 years, 12 years. And they were just like brothers. And they considered my mother their mother. They, they would send her every year, they would send her cards and come visit and spend some time with her. But, you know, it was interesting. My mom always prayed. She was a very great person for prayer. And she always prayed for her sons, and she always prayed for her boys, the foster boys. And these two individuals are, they themselves, um, one of them is very involved with church and another. They're both very religious but not Sometimes they attend church. I'm not quite sure of how religious they are. But my brothers, some of them were a bit over by the edge there, whether they were going to be lost or not. But, but every one of them before, well, two of them before they died, 
became very much involved in church and became very much involved with their life given back to Christ and how that that made an impact upon them. And I think it was because of my mother and her prayer and then her prayers for them that would keep us. You know, a few times we've mentioned how, that, how many times you should almost be dead, you know, uh, accidents, events, you know. I was caught in a power takeoff shaft and twisted up and stuff, pulled out of it. And, but, you know, those things are times in which you're, I think probably it was my mother's prayers that kept us. It was my mother's prayer that kept us safe and from those types of harms. So we find that we, we will not really know how much of an impact prayer has, a loving prayer has upon individuals. So because things don't happen the way we think they should happen doesn't mean God isn't involved in it. Um, there's a story, this uh, bear, this is a story, sorry. A bear and a cub walk, you know, going through the woods and the, the cub gets lost from its mother. And um, it's meandering off and this huge wolf is, sees it as a lunch and it's creeping in and the, bear, the little bear sees it coming, you know, and the bear is frightened, but knows it doesn't run, and it gets in its, you know, the wolves are coming in closer, and the little bear gets in its most aggressive posture and growls and, and bristles up and so on, and the wolf looks at it and then begins to back off. <laughs> and the little bear says, wow, I'm pretty tough, and turned around, and there's his mother. <laughs> you know, it was the mother, <laughs> You know, and why is it that in the uh, animal kingdom that a mother, whether it be a, a giraffe, whether it be an antelope, whether it be a cow, whether it be uh, a dog, a mother is uh, considered that they will fight to the death to protect their children and to protect their offspring. And so it is important that we see how there's a nurturing, and there is a desire to protect and a desire to keep and to sustain a, a child that is theirs, that is your own. Uh, Cassie, I haven't picked on you for a while, so come on up here. <laughs> <laughs> Should have known, huh? Come just get, you know, she's working on Sundays a lot, so. But, up, yeah, way up here. <clears throat> I'd do it down there, but you couldn't see her. All right, now, what happens, you know, we talk about with a mother and how that a mother protects. Now, let's think of this as, as God. Now, when, when God keeps us, now he says nothing will ever separate us, <laughs> that all things work together for good, <laughs> okay, that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, <laughs> What's going on is that God is protecting us. And then if someone goes to attack this lovely lady who is my child, you know, God, not, you know, it's God's, I'm being God at this moment, okay? That being God, when someone attacks his children, you know, just step back. Don't you dare think you're going to get in on this. You know, so the only way, and then even sometimes, the only way that this relationship is broken is if the child decides to run away. But you know what? Even in the running away, God isn't fooled. <laughs> and God knows exactly where to meet up in the future so that our life comes to where it should be, connected and protected by God. So that no matter what happens in our life, no matter where we find ourselves, God is there. And no matter what happens to us, what happens around us, no matter who attacks us, you can't do this. You know, there's this story. I'm going to hold on to you for a while. I like this. Uh, <laughs> there's this story of a, uh, a father and daughter, father, son. They're walking along, and the, again, the boy gets lost from his parent and slips down over kind of a bank and he's hanging on the side of the bank and he's hollering help me and he hears the out in the distance help me 
he's puzzled him. He says, who's there? Who's there? And he's like, help me. Help me. He's very angry because this person was always saying what they're saying. And he goes, you're stupid. And he goes, you're stupid. <laughs> and he can't figure out what's happening. And, he, you know, you're going to die. You're going to die. Oh, we can't have this. And the next thing, his father comes over and helps him up over the bank. And he said, Dad, who's that, who's that person out there? I said, well, that's your echo. My echo? He says, yes, everything you send out is what you hear. That what you send out, you're stupid. You're stupid. <laughs> you can make it. You can make it. God loves me. God loves me. God gives me strength. God gives me strength. Whatever you send out comes back. And as we have this connection, now there's only one other thing. You see, I'm hanging on to her. Now. <laughs> now, being God, we're really connected. It's not so much that I'm hanging on to him, to God, but that God and I are together in this. And when God and I are together, everything is possible. Everything is possible. And this is the relationship God has with us, that he wants us to echo his promises. I can do this. I can do this. <laughs> you know? The Spirit of God is with you. The Spirit of God is with you. <laughs> I'll work everything out to the good. I'll work everything out to the good. You want to stay here or you want to go back and sit down? <laughs> yeah. You go back and sit down. Imagine that. She wants to go sit down. I tell you, I was just thinking this was kind of nice, you know? <laughs> okay, thank you. I like your hair, too. Nobody ever tells me that. like your hair. Yeah, Terry and I are in the same boat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we, we find then that Paul, the apostle, writes to Timothy. And he says to Timothy in this verse here that that precious memory triggers another. Your honest faith and what a rich faith it is handed down from your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. That it is a faith that is handed down we think about it, when, we are, when we're talking about our faith, what are we giving to our children? What faith is being handed down? Do we believe in chance? Do we believe in, you know, making, you know, if you, if you don't do work hard, you're not going to make it. Or, you know, but there's always this truth, there's a combination of working and believing. There's a combination of understanding that God's word is alive inside of us and inside of our spirit, teaching us and, and helping us to understand and to develop who we are. So what are we handing? What are we handing down? Well, Paul tells Timothy, I saw this faith in your grandmother and your mother, and now I see it in you. And this faith that we have inside of us, it's something that has been handed to us either through the scriptures or through our families or through the Holy Spirit, that this faith, this desire to just be, <laughs> be different, to be fulfilled, to, be, um, to become what God wants us to there. It's just something that's inside of us, that the Spirit of God births in us. Whether we've seen it in our family or we've seen it in someone else, it is still a faith that comes to us from God. Timothy, I can see the faith of your mother. Often we would say, with the little children would say, well, you know, you look a lot like your mom. <laughs> look a lot like your dad. You don't look like any of our kids. <laughs> yeah? So what are we doing? We're, we're comparison. But what about our faith? What about our faith? And we, whenever we're believing and praying about something and whatever, are we reflecting the faith that we've been taught by our children? excuse me, by our parents, or even the faith that we've been taught in the scripture if we haven't had godly influences in our life. 
that we are reflecting that which is in God and that which is reflected in the scripture, and it's there being reflected in us. You see, what happens in life? The story of the... Um, the wise man who built his house upon the rock. Foolish man built his house upon sand, in case you didn't know. Uh, when you build your house upon the rock and when you build your house upon the sand, everybody gets a storm. Everybody gets a storm. And it isn't the storm, it's the foundation. Everyone gets the storm. And in this story, Jesus is saying the person, the wise person who has their foundation in God is still standing after the storm. <laughs> and the person who builds their house upon sand, which is that which washes out from underneath you, same structures, perhaps even the same builders, but the foundation determines whether it stands or falls. That's why Christians, believers, can go through storms knowing that God is going to see them through, knowing that God is going to help them. No matter what the storm, I'm still standing. <laughs> no matter what the storm, I'm still standing because my foundation is Jesus Christ and nothing can separate me from the love of God. <laughs> the women of Timothy made an investment in him. And it had a tremendous impact on his life. It changed his life and it changed his <laughs> destiny, as it were, what he would become because of his relationship with, with Christ. So these women made an investment and it had a tremendous impact. So we think about ourselves, men and women. What impact are we having on people's lives with our faith? What are we demonstrating? What are we conveying to the people around us? That we can make this? That forgiveness and love, these are, these are gifts, these are fruits, these are gifts and fruits of God to our life, and he helps us to become. We're not there yet. If you were finished with this course of life, you wouldn't be here. No, you wouldn't be home in bed. You would be in heaven. <laughs> so the heart of the mother is one that encourages, inspires, and invests. The heart of a mother is one that encourages. Now, we have a number of uh, educators here. <laughs> and um, there, there are... There are parents who stick up for their kids when they are totally wrong, but they don't want to disappoint their kid, so they're going to fight for their kid, their child, even though their child is wrong. That's not what the Bible is saying. The Bible says that we invest, and we invest in truth. We, in, we encourage. We encourage things that can be done, that should be done, and that we invest Huh, you know, mothers, how much time have you invested in your children? About 25 years worth. <laughs> I can't wait till they get married and get out of the house. And uh, when they get out of the house, then they have grandkids and they bring them over and I have to take care of them, you know. And it's just, they're just, see the investment. How much are we investing? And it isn't just time. You know, I think of, for our grandchildren, you know, we get to see Jack every once in a while, you know, which maybe once a month or so on. But our other ones, we only see maybe once or twice a year. And it's like, do they even know who we are? You know, that we are the ATM machine to them, <laughs> you know. I always remember we, were, we had Jonathan this summer, and, um, and he was in the, the store, and he was really upset and crying, you know, he wanted something, and he came back with, if my mommy and daddy were here, they would buy it for me. <laughs> okay, grandpa, you know, can fork up here. If you want our love, you better fork it over, and, but investing isn't just 
isn't just our finances. Investing is our time and our love, our forgiveness, and that life is about teaching, that there is forgiveness and there are consequences. But the consequences never override forgiveness. And there are consequences that we have to face. But in one of the things I, I think of with parents, <laughs> I remember one situation where a child was uh, always was cursing, you know, constantly cursing. And, uh, and the, the teacher had to ask the parent to come in because this was a, a problem that they needed to address with their child. And so the teacher tells the parent, you know, your child is always cursing, and, you know, every other word out of his mouth is a curse word. And the parent says, I don't know where that blankety-blank kid gets this blankety-blank language on which he would be able to blankety-blank talk about it in the classroom. <laughs> you know, it was reflecting who he heard it from dad. That's where he heard it from. So a, a heart of a mother is one that encourages and inspires. A heart of a mother is one that nurtures nurtures, appreciates. Um, the heart of a mother influences. <laughs> heart of a mother is one that loves and has tenderness. And it is a, it is a heart that teaches. And, and every moment is not a teaching moment, okay? Every moment is not, you got to learn this, you got to learn it. No, I remember uh, it was one of these uh, great scientists that uh, was asked, who taught you to be this way? And he says, well, my mother did. And he, he was telling about how that when he was a child that he was getting milk out of the refrigerator and the bottle fell and broke. It was glass in those days. Fell and broke on the floor. So mother came in and says, you stupid kid. <laughs> no. Mother comes in and says, my, what a big mess it makes when glass shatters on the floor. We need to watch how we clean this up and watch the glass and all that other stuff. And then she says, we need to go outside and we need to figure out how little hands can hold a big jug. <laughs> and when things don't happen the way they do or the way they are, we need to find ways that our spirit and our life can get our hands around that which the moment is teaching us, that which the moment is conveying to us. And the moment that we are find ourselves in, the Holy Spirit has a way to speak to our hearts, has a way to prepare our hearts and to teach us about life, life lessons and about faith and about trust and knowing that God, God is at work in all these things, that God is helping and God is behind with, involved with, everything that is going on in our life. Everything that happens to us is about us. <laughs> everything that happens to us is about us and how that God is at work in me. Nothing can separate tests, problems, difficulties. Get a flat tire on the road. Uh-huh. <laughs> Another opportunity for God to work his will and purpose. And it's been interesting how that certain people have met because of a flat tire. <laughs> you know, their lives were changed because they had a flat tire and the person comes up be and stops behind them and they met to became friends and got married a couple years later. What is that? It's, it's like God is at work in each of the situations we find ourselves in. So if we're looking and thanking God for the moment, and everything gives thanks. So preceding the events, we are to give thanks for the event that is happening. Knowing that in all things, give thanks, for God is going to work out his will in who I am and what I am and what I'm doing. So the encouraging word is that God is with us and we are reflective of that word, encouragement, to our children, to our grandchildren, to our neighbors, to whomever, and we attach that encouragement to our faith in God. See, God is at work. 
We all have the opportunity to influence and inspire. <laughs> we all have the opportunity to influence and inspire others. We all have the opportunity to deposit words of faith and encouragement in people's hearts. We all have the opportunity to be an example of love and of faith because there's nothing on earth like the treasure of someone's heart. So it's in this place of our heart that we share who we are. To all mothers who have invested so much into the lives of their children, may you be blessed, may you be strengthened, may you be empowered by the Spirit. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> this time I'd like all the ladies to stand. All ladies, no matter what age. You don't have to be mothers. You just have to be female. <laughs> Come forward. Oh, yeah. Uh, Brian, you want to go down, haul her downstairs? All the kids come up. So come forward. You know, she can't stand. No, and that little one can stay. So. You don't want to. Just come on down. Sit down. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All ladies, come on down. So ladies, we want to thank you for all your gifts, young and old. I didn't look anybody old, young. <laughs> Just young. All the young hearts that are here, <laughs> you know. And so we thank you for your gifts of love and friendship and help and pray that uh, God's blessing be upon you. And this Mother's Day, we thank you for your blessed gifts to one another. So you can have a flower, and after everyone has their own flower, if there's what's left, you can take for your... You know, if your mom's not here or your grandma, you want to give them a flower, you can take that too. But everybody here has to have a flower first. <laughs> so do you know which flower you want? All right. Which one do you want, my dear? Huh? Uh, pick a flower. Go ahead. Pick a flower. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody, all ladies, get a flower. You have to go home and plant these, you know. <laughs> All right, so if everybody has a flower, Jan, come on up and get a flower. So everyone that is here has a flower. Okay, now if you can, there's the, from what's left, you can choose for your mother or just one, one or so. Don't take 15, just one. <laughs> take a whole load. Yeah, take another one. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. You're welcome. All right, we can all stand. <laughs> Okay, uh, one other announcement before we leave. Um, the evangels, you know, we don't have those. They don't come anymore, but there's a monthly book that comes instead, and it's on the back uh, table if you'd like to take one of those home. So, ladies, all the men will say, Happy Mother's Day. Ready? Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs>